is sing praises unto God, sing praises. Everyone knows that, right? Okay, so I'm expecting us, expecting you to sing with us. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Better days are coming by and by when we reach the city in the sky. Sorrows will be over and joy will come at last. Better days are coming by.
and amen. All right, I, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that most of us were enjoying those lovely singing. Amen? Amen. amen. All right, tonight we are at night number, um, number eight, sorry, night number eight. Just like that, we almost covered two weeks of this revival. And guess what? We still need to invite more people. We still need to let people know what is taking place here at Maranatha SDA Church. To our online viewers, we are glad to have you being on our, our online viewers. But if you can be our in-house viewers, that will be good as well. I want to say that we are almost wrapping up two weeks of this revival, which means we have about one more week. And, um, you know, we went out today and we just walked the area, Sianjo and myself. And uh, we were inviting some people to come out as well. And they, they said that they are coming out. One gentleman by, um, in, in particular, he said that when I am there at the church, I'm going to tap you on your shoulder to say, I am here. And I haven't seen him as yet. But I'm hoping that he reached. All right. So we want to continue this series. We want for you guys to be blessed by the messages night after night. But guess what? We don't want to get too uh, greedy with this message and with what's happening here at Maranatha. And so we want to spread the word. And so we want to encourage each of us tonight. Let's try and invite someone. Let them know what is happening here at Maranatha. All right? So with that, I encourage us. Let's show our support. Let's come out. And also let's invite individuals to come out as well. Thank you. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for waking us up, Lord, and we are in our right minds. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for even tonight, even though we are still few in numbers, but I know that your presence is here with us, Lord. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, our God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I'm asking you to walk into this place tonight, dear Father. I'm asking you to remember your man speaker. The Father, I'm asking you to give anoint him from the crown of his head and to the sole of his feet. Remember those who are in beds. Father, remember those who are watching, even from the television. Father, I'm asking you, Father, to bless him tonight also. Have thine own sweet way in our life tonight, O Lord, and have mercy upon us as I beg and I do ask this mercy in your dear name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. It is good to know that we can be here another night for our revival series. And I'm going to draw on the analogy of the time that we're in, which is Easter, or we at least we're coming around to the Easter time. And there are some little creatures who are normally very present. I call them the Easter bug. Some persons may call them the May bug. But you will find that whenever it is this time, they are always everywhere, even in your hair. <laughs> and they don't need an invitation to go anywhere because they are always present. And as I draw on the analogy of the Easter bug, I just know that I can say that this place is a place where everybody is welcome. Whether you're here face to face or you're online, we welcome you to another night in our series. I do hope you're blessed and feel free to move around, greet, and just like that Easter bug, you can be present anytime, anywhere. As we come, let us sing our welcome song, smile everybody smile, and we'll move around and greet each other. Somebody in Jesus. 
It's offering time. Let me invite you to stand as the ushers get ready to, to collect the offering. Please stand as we pray. Father, we truly thank you for your love and your divine mercies. We ask your blessing on the offering that is about to be collected. And we pray that you may bless your people wherever they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The windows of heaven are open and the blessings are falling tonight. There is joy, joy. are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old spotted garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on heavenly Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. I'm rushing the week for the Sabbath to come. Good night, everyone. How are we doing tonight? Wonderful. Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long. So far from shore, so far from home, I set out in search of a reason to go on, and there I found it in the eye of the storm no matter what storm clouds may rock this ship 
lip of mine the light of my savior will lead me safely through the night and though my ship may be rocking and my sails may be torn i shall rest in the eye of the storm when the wind and water rages and the billows begin to roll the blessed rock of ages speaks peace to my soul he holds me In the eye of the storm, no matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. ship may be rocking and my sails may be torn I shall rest in the eye of the storm no matter what storm clouds may rock this ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. And though my ship may be rocking and my sails may be torn, I shall rest. We all shall rest in the eye of the storm, eye of the storm. The blind man walked on waters and he raised up Jairus' daughter. He fed the hungry, cleansed the leper. But we need Jesus now more than ever. Jesus now. sailing in stormy weather. All his children should get together, for we need Jesus now more than ever. He touched the lame man and he started walking. He touched the dumb man started talking he put their lives all back together but we need Jesus now more than ever Jesus 
Jesus now more than ever we are sailing in stormy weather all his children should get together for we need Jesus now more than ever Jesus now more than ever we are sailing in stormy weather all his children should get together for we need Jesus now more than ever Amen and amen. We truly do need Jesus now more than ever. We need him now more than ever. More than how we need a job. We need Jesus more than how we need a fast food. We need Jesus more than how we need a partner. We need Jesus more than anything else in this world. We do need him now more than ever. Good evening, Maranatha. It's a joy, it's a privilege to stand before you once more this amazing evening. Let me take this opportunity to welcome those of us who are here in the physical space. Let me welcome our visiting friends here in the physical space as well. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, the Olipes family, a good friend, friend, good friends of mine. Yes, it's a joy having you here uh, this evening. Let's welcome those of us who are joining here uh, virtually. It is always a pleasure having you supporting us, coming on out to watch us virtually. Let me also mention those who will be watching at a later date. Truly, we appreciate uh, your dedicated support that you give to us over here in Maranatha. We have been having a glorious time down here. What do God's people say? Yes, truly, we have been having an amazing time. Uh, on night one, we looked at trust issues. And by the next night, we got a glorious heads up. And then we learned of a good God who still reigns over what is uh, apparently a bad world. And then we learned that yes, there is a great spring cleaning that each and every single one of us can partake of. And then the following night we learned what it means to truly uh, break free. For who the sun sets free is free indeed. And then on Sabbath, we learned that we've got uh, some amazing, yes, we've got an amazing link in high places. And then on Sunday night, we learned about who laughs last. And we learned that they truly, or he truly laughs best. Then we learned about law and order. And tonight, tonight there is a message in store for us. There is a message in store for us, but before we jump into the Word of God, I'm going to invite you and I'm going to ask of you to do what I normally ask you to do. 
It's the time wherein I ask for you to breathe a word of prayer for, for the preacher up here. And to breathe a word of prayer that those of us who are within hearing of my voice this evening, that we, that we will all be blessed. I invite those who are in the physical space and those who are on the virtual space to assume an attitude of reverence even now. And as I pray audibly, you pray silently in your hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God of heaven, the time has come once more. And my simple prayer, my asking even now, is that you will glorify your name. Use this feeble lump of clay, O oh God, to bring glory and honor to your name. We recognize even now that without you, all that we do will be in vain. And so even now, in a special way, we pray and ask that your Holy Spirit will work upon the hearts of all those who are gathered here and all those who are hearing my voice even now in the virtual space and in the physical space. And so, God, even now, may the words that proceed from my mouth, may the meditation of my heart, may they be pleasing in your sight, O God. Empower me even now that the words will go forward with power, with conviction, and with clarity so that your name will be glorified. These are the tender mercies we pray and ask of you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen amen and amen i love the book of psalms i love the book of psalms a difficult book to study but i love it nonetheless and as we go through the psalms we find various themes coming out and one of the many themes that come out in the book of psalm uh, is history in an interesting way, the psalmist, they, through songs and through poetry, they record the history of God's people. They capitalize on various themes and they teach us various wonderful uh, truths about our loving God. And so one of the amazing psalms uh, that we're going to be going through this evening is Psalm 95. A Psalm 95, and there is a message in it for each and every single one of us. It says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. And in his hand are the deep places of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, approved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. I caption this one this evening, the rest of the story. The rest of the story. The Bible is filled with stories. It is filled with amazing stories. It is filled with uh, heartbreaking stories. It is filled with stories that have you at the edge of uh, your feet. And we're going to be looking at a story this evening. A story with an interesting turn of event. A story that is referenced here in uh, the psalm. The psalmist, he starts out by capturing the 
a majestic wonders of a awesome and amazing creator God. He, he captures the God who formed this earth in six literal days and rested on the seventh day. He blessed it. He sanctified it. He made it holy and commanded for the people of this world to keep his Sabbath. Now we find that as we go through the Bible, we find a little people who were caught in captivity. If you did not hear uh, the message, Breaking Free, uh, you should go and check it out. And so, yes, for 400 long years, uh, God's people were in Egyptian captivity. But there came a time when their cries went up, and he said, Enough is enough. And with great signs and wonders, he delivered his people from captivity. We praise the good God of heaven that he not only creates, but he redeems his people even when they become all messed up in sin. And so while they were there in captivity, of course, through great signs and wonders, he brought them out. Yes, he brought them out of Egyptian captivity and set them on a journey to what is known as the promised land. And on this journey, we find a people stubborn, stiff-necked, difficult, rebellious, and the list of adjectives could go on to describe these people. Uh, often we sit here uh, in 2024 and we curse, we complain, and we chastise the Israelites for their behavior, but we're not much better. We were not much better for, like the Israelites of old, we see the various ways in which the good Lord has been working in our lives. Yes, we see the various signs and wonders that he performed in our daily life to show us that, look, he is up there. He is still interested in our well-being and he still wants for us to serve him with all our hearts. We can recall those instances wherein we should have been dead there have been a number of near-miss situations. Each time you go out there on the road, it is a leap of faith. Whether you're a driver or you are a pedestrian crossing, a pedestrian uh, using the road out there, we, we recognize that had it not been for the grace and mercies of God, we would have been cut down in a matter of seconds. Each time we pay attention to the news, we see where in there are vehicular collisions. We see where individuals are dying from road fatality. Both persons who drive and persons who walk. That's just one instance we're in. We see the good Lord protecting and providing for us. How often do we find ourselves in a situation wherein we don't know where the next meal is, but my God is so great and awesome that he puts food on your table. He puts clothes on your back. He provides you a place wherein you can rest your head at night. I don't know about anyone else, but I say that is enough for me to praise my great and awesome God in heaven. And so the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt, and they were led by a pillar of cloud in the day and a pillar of fire by the night. And they saw great signs and wonders wherein the Lord took care of their enemies. We see wherein the Lord kept them. He protected them from the forces of nature. He protected them from anyone who would dare to attack them. We see wherein he even destroyed the Egyptians who tried to pursue them. But we find that the children of Israel, as they were nearing their final destination, we see a drama being unfolded in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. In Numbers chapter 13 and 14, we see by the time we get to verse 17, we see wherein Moses is sending the spies out to check out the promised land. So God has promised his people that he would bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. But he, know that he knew the heart of these people. He knew what they required. He knew what their faith depended on for it to thrive. And so he gave Moses the commission saying, hey, uh, round up 12 spies 
and to ensure that it is transparent, ensure that you take a spy from each tribe so that no one can say that you're cooking up information to feed it to them. And so Moses, he rounded up the 12 spies and he sent them off into uh, the promised land. And he told them specifically what they should look out for and to bring back the report. It says in verse 17 of Numbers chapter 13, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Get you up this way, southward, and go into the mountains and see the land what it is. And the people that dwell it therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. What cities they be, they be that they dwell in, whether it in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether be, there be wood therein or not. And be of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grape. And so the spies, they went, I can imagine that they snuck on up there, ensuring that no one would catch them, ensuring that they would not be caught and executed. And so they made their way into the promised land. They beheld all that was before them, and so they got ready and they brought back the report. In verse 27 of Numbers 13, it says, And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. And nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities were walled and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak, right there we see that the spies they went up they understood their assignment they went up and did what they were told to do and they brought back the report but halfway through the report the report started to change tone yes they came back and they said look the land it flows with milk and honey it is beautiful it's amazing it's the perfect place to live but we have a problem we have a problem because we've got some big people down there. Some scary looking people down there. Uh, some individuals that look as if they can squash us like an insect living down there. We've got a big problem. And so the Amalekites, they dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. These individuals, they recognized that they had a big problem before them. They saw that they have a big problem before them, but their unbelief stopped them from seeing that they have a bigger God who is on their side, who is able to bring them into the promised land. And so we find right here, uh, the people, the people, they uh, cooked up quite the story. And so by the time they got to the second version or the second half of the story, they were successful. The great majority of the spies, they were successful in feeding the children of Israel with a lie. They, they, they were successful in poisoning their minds against going into the promised land. And so right here we find the children, the children of Israel, they started doing something that they were exceptionally good at. They started murmuring. They started complaining. And they started hollering about what God has been doing for them. And their murmuring led to them making a decision. Numbers 14, verse 4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Mercy. Let us go back to the place that we cried to God to deliver us from. Let us go back down into that place that was viciously oppressing us. Let us go back into that addiction that God had set us free. Let me go back and trouble the rum and boom. Let me go back and trouble uh, the marijuana. Let me go back and be a part of uh, that illicit uh, lifestyle that God had delivered me from. For what is before our eyes has seemed to be all too big for the Lord to deliver me from. 
That's basically what the children of Israel were saying. And when Moses, when Moses recognized what was taking place here, uh, quickly he began uh, to intercede on behalf of the people. That the people were, they, they were encouraged and says, Look, don't rebel against your Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not but the children of Israel. They were so fixated in their stubbornness that they incurred the divine wrath of God. And so here's the question. What's the rest of the story? What's the rest of the story? God's people are on a journey. So we find that these individuals, they, that generation right there, uh, they faced the divine judgment of God. Uh, for God, for God said, look, this generation shall not see the promised land. And so as Moses was interceding with the Lord, he says, pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people, uh, forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because, uh, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. And surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. For my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him that followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. So what about the rest of the story? I say to us, I say to us that the book of Hebrews, it's a book where it, it develops on some amazing and some beautiful themes. I love the fact that it makes a comparison to so many things and it shows us that there is a better thing that is in existence. It shows us that, look, there is something that's better than bleach. It shows us that, look, we have a better high priest in a better sanctuary who does a better work of atonement at a larger scale so that everyone can benefit from it. And so the book of Hebrews, it highlights, it highlights that we are on a better journey. A better journey to a better promised land. A better journey to a better promised land wherein we will dwell with our Lord and Savior forever. God's people are on a journey to a better promised land. No, no, no. We don't have to go into war with any uh, strange nation to acquire uh, this promised land. Uh, for Jesus said in John chapter 14 that he goes to prepare a place for each and every single one of us. That where he is, we will be also. I say to someone that there is someone out there who is better than Joshua. We have a better Joshua leading us to a better promised land. I say to someone out there, whether on the virtual side, whether in this immediate church, whether in the hearing of my voice, you've got to follow my Lord and Savior as he leads us to a better promised land. And so as we're there in the book of Hebrews, more so chapters 3 and 4, we find that the warning, the warning is given in Hebrews of the deceitfulness of sin and unbelief. For in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 15, it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. 
What it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. Like the children of Israel back then, as they were on the border of the promised land, we find that we are in a similar uh, situation. We are in a similar situation wherein we have the opportunity to look behind us to see all the great and amazing things that the Lord has done for us. And we have the opportunity to look before us, though we see many trials, though we see many tribulations, Though we see many rough patches ahead of us, if we but trust in the Lord, he is able to give us the victory and bring us home into the promised land. Another thing that we find coming out in the book of Hebrews is that faith is a choice. Faith is a choice that if we choose not to exercise, will come with dire consequences. We find that faith is a choice wherein we choose to believe all the things that God has done for us or we choose to magnify our circumstances, our tribulations, the rough patches that exist all around us. The children of Israel, they were exposed to the giants. They saw the giants in Canaan at that time. But there are also individuals who saw that the great and awesome God of heaven, he destroyed Pharaoh and his armies. We see a God who parted the Red Sea. We, we find that these individuals, they saw a God who touched down on Mount Sinai with great thunderings and fire and lightning. He was a pillar of fire by night. He was a pillar of cloud by day. There was no one who who stood in the way of the Israelites. He gave them manna when they were hungry, even in a dry and weary land. He provided them with water. That God, the God of Israel, the one who created heavens and earth, he is able to deliver his people. He is able to fulfill each and every promise in their life. But unfortunately, the Israelites, they, they did not choose to anchor their faith in all that the Lord has done. Is this the reality for someone here today? We have seen the impossibilities that God has done in our lives. We have seen that moment we're in, we're without a job. We see those moments we're in, we were without food where we see those moments where we were without even our basic necessities. But the good Lord of heaven, in his providence, showed us that he is more than able and willing to take care of our needs. Will we at this point in our journey let sin, let unbelief, let doubt stand in the way of the Lord and the blessings that he has in store for us? I say to someone out there that my God has great and awesome ways of blowing our minds with blessings. But the only thing standing in our way is ourselves. Ourselves and our doubt and unbelief. So we see where the author of Hebrews, we see where the book of Hebrews, are, uh, we find that springboarding from the seventh day, uh, the wonders of the God of creation and the beautiful work of redemption is brought into clear view. I say, I say, I say, Uncle Paul does wonderfully in the way in which he brings uh, to light this wonderful reality. For in making reference, in making reference to the God of creation, when the Lord created this mighty, this magnificent, this beautiful earth, we see wherein he created it and he allowed for there to be a day wherein we rest from all our labors. We find this coming out in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, in Exodus chapter 20, in uh, the fourth commandments, we are in, we are reminded, we are told uh, to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy six days shall thou labor and do all thy work but 
The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do, and thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. And here's the reason. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and allowed it. But I say to someone that, look, that's not the only reason why we are instructed are to keep the Sabbath holy. For in the book of Deuteronomy, the theme of redemption is brought to the spotlight. For in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15, it says, Remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence uh, through a mighty hand. Hand, and by a stretched out arm, therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee uh, to keep the Sabbath day. Yes, the Sabbath tells us that God is not only creator, but he is a redeemer of his people. And he has a say in our life. Yes, my God, he not only created us, but, but when we were down there deep in sin, all messed up, uh, sinking deeper and deeper and deeper, he saw something of worth in each and every single one of us. He saw something of worth in you. He saw something of worth in me. And he stretched out his arm unto all those who would accept uh, his invitation. He yanks us from the pit of sin and plants our feet on solid, a stable ground, redirecting our path, putting us on a journey like the children of Israel uh, to a promised land. I say we serve an amazing God. I say we serve an amazing God we're in. Uh, though sin has made us broken, though sin has made us filthy, though sin has messed us up, my God, the same one who created this entire world is able to recreate his image in us. We serve an amazing God that not only creates, but he redeems. And so as we are here right now, Right now, for each and every single week, we're affording an opportunity wherein we can dwell, we can reflect on the wonders of our amazing creator God in heaven. Each and every single Sabbath day, each and every single Sabbath day of rest that the Lord has commanded us to keep, we are afforded an opportunity to bask in the wonders of creation. But even then, it gets even sweeter. For we have the opportunity to look at where the Lord has brought us from and look at where he wants to bring us and be reminded that there is a still a great rest that the Lord wants to give us when he returns and bring his precious children home. I say the Lord is intentional. The Lord is intentional. Is intentional of in giving us a glimpse of hope on this rugged path called life as we're journeying home. And the gleam of hope we find is in the rest that the Lord affords us. The gleam of hope is found in the rest of the story, as I'd like to call it. Before our very eyes is the promised land. Before our very eyes is the promised land. New Jerusalem, uh, the place Jesus has gone to prepare for us. Before our eyes is the promised land. But here's a question. How, uh, how, how many of us this evening will exercise our faith and believe that the Lord is able to do all that he has promised to do in our lives? How many of us will let go of doubt we let go of unbelief. We let go of skepticism. We let go of all those things that keep us from the blessings of God. How many of us are willing to partake of the rest afforded here, the foretaste of the grand and glorious rest that the Lord wants to give to us? 
And so we find in a very pointed way, in a very pointed way in Hebrews 4 verse 11, it says, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For all that God has done for us thus far, it's about time that someone uh, put their faith where their mouth is. It's about time that we man up and woman up and make that decision to follow my Lord and Savior. To follow him unto sweet, sweet salvation. Some of us have made that decision already. But I know that right now, uh, someone is out there who has not made that life-changing decision to go all the way with my Jesus. I say to you that this evening, there is a gleam of hope even for you. For it is not too late to make the decision of a lifetime to go all the way with my Lord and my Savior. It is not too late for you to come unto Jesus for your we are weak and heavy laden and find rest. It is not too late for you to let uh, the Savior uh, break you free. Yes, you've got trust issues, but my God has given us a reason for us to trust in his word. Uh, God not only stops there, he gives us a heads up of what is to come in the future. And though it is a bad world, we realize that there is still a good God who watches over his people. And yes, though we live in a bad world, and though sometimes we get all messed up or with sin, I say to someone, winter eventually ends and spring comes, wherein we can partake of the spring cleaning off a lifetime. And not only that, for those who are shackled with sin, my Jesus, my Jesus, he is the great deliverer who is able to set you free from that sin. And not only that, if it is that we think that we are not strong enough to make it on a life's journey, I say that's okay because you've got links in high places that is able to keep you along this path of righteousness. And so right now we say, we say that we have heard the story. And we know who has the last, the, the last laugh of the story. The question is, what side will you stand on? We recognize that we live in a world where there is such a thing as law and order. We recognize that though the law, though we have broken the laws of God, we can have a dramatic a change of experience like the woman caught in the act of adultery. And so though her situation demands for her uh, to face the consequences of the law, she got the shock of a lifetime when God gave her grace. She received amazing grace that she wasn't necessarily deserving of. But my Jesus, my Jesus, saw that she, as well as you and I, needed this amazing grace. And it is afforded to us even today. And so tonight we're hearing about the rest of the story. I say to someone out there, who is hard pressed on every side, it's about time that you experience some rest. But you can't experience it outside my Lord and Savior. Is there such a person this evening who has not tasted of sweet, sweet rest? The time is now for there is a gleam of hope. As the praise team gets ready to sing that appeal song, I want to make a very pointed appeal to someone this evening. As you have sat and you have listened, 
to someone who may be on the outside hearing uh, this voice night after night you have sat you have listened you have been thinking time and time again what should i do i need to make a decision i need to make a different decision in this lifetime because i cannot continue on the same path i say the time is no harden not your heart but give my god a chance give my god a chance to make a difference in your life give my god a chance to give you rest a foretaste of what is to come when he puts in his appearance give my god a chance to give you a new life as we hand over to the priest you know to do that appeal song My Savior, wheresoever my lost may be, where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I'll follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me. this time I'm going to be doing something very special. I'm going to invite us to stand. I'm going to invite us to stand and as we bow our heads with our eyes closed, I want for you to listen to my voice this evening. And as you listen, I want for you to follow these instructions. You have come out tonight for whatever reason. Your heart may be hard pressed you have developed an interest in the Lord. You want something new in your life. You want to learn more. You are scared of a big decision that you've got to make. But you want to draw closer to the Lord. While your head is still bowed and your eyes are closed, I just want for you to raise your hand right now. Wherever you are, we're not about all those who may be watching. Their heads are bowed and their eyes are closed. You're making a decision. Difficult as it may be. You don't know all the in and outs of it, but you want to draw closer to your Lord and Savior. Won't you raise your hand at this moment? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God bless. Amen. Amen. The Lord sees those hands. And so at this time, even now, as we are about to pray, 
I'm going to call upon Elder Neil to do this prayer. I'm going to call upon Elder Neil to do this prayer. to Jordan's rolling pillows cold and deep thou leadest me thou hast crossed the waves before me and I still will follow thee I will follow thee my Savior Father God, as we come before you tonight, the Lord, we want to thank you once again for the meditation, dear Father. Reminding us, dear Lord, that sometimes we find ourselves in a situation, dear Lord, where you have delivered us. But yet we want to go back to Egypt. We want to go back to that old lifestyle. We want to go back to that old experience. Even though you have removed us from that situation, dear God, the desire to go back is always there. But I'm thankful, dear Father, because your arms are always open, ready to receive us. Even when we don't deserve it, even when we mess up, you're there waiting for us. I want to ask special prayer, dear God, for those who have raised their hand. Those who want to have a closer walk with you dear lord those who want to start new in their relationship with you i ask the lord that you may continue to bless this series father we are grateful dear lord because there are still individuals who have have the desire and the need to hear your word i ask special prayer for let's say andre dear lord as he continue to bring the meditation dear god that you may continue to use him. That you may continue to speak to him and through him, dear Father. Dear Lord, as we leave from here, help us, dear God, to be reminded that you will always be with us. Help us, dear Lord, to be reminded that you're the God who have sent your, your, your only son to die for us. And now as we leave from here, but not from your presence, take us home safely. It's unto my prayer. Amen. Amen. If you were blessed by that, by that meditation for tonight. The rest of the story. The rest of the story. So we want to invite you out tomorrow night as well. Um, uh, but we want for you to bring someone. All right. We want for you to bring someone. All right. Bring someone out tomorrow night that they too can be blessed by the message. Thank you once again and enjoy the rest of your night.